Hi everyone, in this video on truth trees, I'll talk about truth tree terminology. So let's talk about some terms of vocabulary for talking about truth trees. The first definition is the definition of a branch. A branch consists of all the well-formed formulas obtained by starting from the bottom of the tree and reading upward through the tree. So for example, if we take a look at the following truth tree, we can identify two branches. There's the branch that begins with M on line 5, and we move upward to R, P, M, or not P, and then finally P and R. In addition, there's the branch on the right-hand side, which consists of not P, R, P, M, or not P, and then P and R. Let's take a look at this a little bit more closely. The following tree has two branches. If we start from the base of the tree, we see that the first branch, or the leftmost branch, consists of all of the formulas that are blue. This tree consists of M, R, P, M or not P, and then P and R. So to obtain the well-formed formulas in a branch, we simply start from the base of the branch, or base of the tree, and read upward, listing off all of the well-formed formulas found in that branch. The second branch can be found starting from the base of the rightmost side and more working our way upward. This branch consists of not P, R, P, M or not P, P and R. Again, the procedure for identifying the well-formed formulas is the same. Next, a fully decomposed branch. A fully decomposed branch is a branch where all of the propositions in the branch or formulas in the branch that can be decomposed have been decomposed. That is, all of the decomposable propositions have been decomposed. In this example, we have two fully decomposed branches. This is because all of the formulas that can be decomposed have been decomposed. That is, lines 1 and 2, the conjunction and the disjunction, have been decomposed in, at lines 3, 4, and 5. A partially decomposed branch, or perhaps a better term, an undecomposed branch, is a branch where there is at least one proposition or formula in the branch that has not been decomposed. So in this example here, while line 1 has been decomposed at lines 3 and 4 using conjunction decomposition, line 2 has not been decomposed. That is, line 2 is a proposition that can be decomposed but has not been decomposed. In other words, we haven't given a full demonstration or graphical display of the conditions under which lines 1 and 2 are true. We've only sort of illustrated the truth conditions for line 1 by stacking P and R at line 3 and 4. What we haven't done is given a display of the conditions under which both lines 1 and 2 can be true. A branch is considered closed when it contains a proposition or formula P and its literal negation. Now P need not be the letter P. In fact, it can be any well-formed formula. We illustrate that a branch is closed by placing an X at the base of the branch. In this example, if you take a look at the rightmost branch, this branch is considered closed. The reason for this is because in the set of well-formed formulas found in this branch, there's a proposition and its literal negation. In particular, there's a proposition P at line 3 and not P, its literal negation at line 5. What makes a branch close is that there's a proposition and its literal negation. So for example, if you had not P right arrow Q and P right arrow Q, notice that these two formulas are literal negations of each other, and so if they were both found in the same branch, the branch would be considered closed. An open branch is any branch that is not closed. In saying that it's not closed, all that we're saying is that there's not a formula P and its literal negation, not P. So if you take a look at the tree found here, the leftmost branch is considered open. If you start from the base of the tree and work your way upward, you see that there is M, R, P, M or not P, and then P and R. Now none of these formulas are literal negations of each other, and so the branch is considered open. Now a completed open branch is a fully decomposed branch that is not closed. That is, it consists of a branch where all of the propositions that can be decomposed have been decomposed, 
and there's not a proposition p and its literal negation not p. The leftmost branch here is considered a completed open branch. This is because all of the propositions in this branch have been decomposed and if you'll notice there's not a proposition p and its literal negation not p. So the branch is considered a completed open branch. Now a completed open tree is simply a tree with at least one completed open branch. Of course it could have more than one completed open branch, but in order for a tree to be considered a completed open tree, all that's required is that there's one completed open branch. So if we take a look at the following tree, this tree is considered a completed open tree. Why? Well, it's a completed open tree because there's at least one completed open branch, which is the leftmost branch. And notice that in this branch, there's not a proposition P and its literal negation P. And so it's a completed open branch. So since this tree has at least one completed open branch, it's considered a completed open tree. Now a closed tree is a tree where all of the tree's branches are closed. Under every branch of a closed tree, there'll be an X under it. So if we take a look at this example, notice that all of the branches here are closed. That if we start from the leftmost side, we have a proposition not R and its literal negation R. And if we look at the other branch on the rightmost side, we have a proposition P and its literal negation not P. So here we have a tree where all of the branches are closed. And so this tree is considered a closed tree. Lastly, the descending decomposition rule is less a term for describing some part of the tree or condition of the tree and more a rule for explaining how certain formulas found in the tr tree are decomposed. What the descending decomposition rule states is that when decomposing a proposition or formula P, it's necessary to decompose P under every open branch that descends from it. Just to highlight some features of this rule, first, when you decompose P, you only need to decompose it under every open branch that descends from P. So you're not required to decompose it under branches that do not descend from P. And you're not required to decompose P under closed branches, only the open branches. So it's helpful to take a look at an example involving the descending decomposition rule. In this example, we have two propositions, R or P wedge M, and then at line two, C wedge D. Using the truth tree and decomposition rules, we want to see the conditions under which these two formulas are true. So first, line three is the result of disjunction decomposition, that is a decomposition of line one, a disjunction, and then line two involves the use of conjunction decomposition. Notice that when we use conjunction decomposition on line two, we obey the descending decomposition rule, that is, when we make use of conjunction decomposition on line two, we decompose it under every open branch that descends from C wedge D. So we decompose it under both the branch that contains R, the leftmost branch, and the branch that contains P wedge M. Well, what about P wedge M? Here is a proposition that can be decomposed that has not de been decomposed. Should we decompose it under both branches? just the left branch or just the right branch? The answer is we decompose it under the right branch. The descending decomposition rule states that we should decompose a formula under every open branch that descends from that formula. The branch containing R, C, D, the leftmost branch, does not descend from the formula P wedge M. That is, we should only decompose P wedge M under every branch that descends from that formula, which is only the right branch. It's helpful to look at an example of conjunction decomposition that violates this descending decomposition rule. So here we decompose P wedge M under both branches. This would be an incorrect use of conjunction decomposition because it violates this descending decomposition rule. It decomposes P wedge M under a branch that doesn't descend from P wedge M. Thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button. If you're interested in more videos on symbolic logic, make sure you subscribe.